this was the way it began. The probing questions and bright lights, posings and signings. What phases of Japan do you seek to explore, Mr. Faulkner? Mr. Faulkner, what do you think of Japanese culture? How do you like Ernest Hemingway? Mr. Faulkner, can the soul be evil, and if so, where is truth? Famed novelist William Faulkner said he hopes to deepen his understanding of Japanese culture at a press conference shortly after he arrived for a three-week visit. Wearing red suspenders, the American novelist drew a laugh when he said he wrote Sanctuary in order to buy a horse. But that was in Tokyo, and he was going to Nagano, 200 miles northwest of the capital, to a seminar on American literature, where the pace would be slower, to leave time for reflection and exploration. A peaceful, pleasant place, he said. A nice place to live. Climates like home. civilization, an ancient and ordered homogeny of the human race. The splashed symbols of the characters hold not mere communication, but something urgent and important, beyond just information, promising toward some ultimate wisdom or knowledge, containing the secret of man's salvation. interview with the aged abbess and new knowledge of Buddhism and its place in Japan. All the while remembering the old woman vending beans beneath the gate for tourists to feed the pigeons with. A face worn with living and remembering as though one life had not been long enough. Here finally is one who never read Faulkner and neither knows nor cares why he came to Japan nor gives a single damn what he thinks of Ernest Hemingway. Others do. The young students prying and prodding with their questions, wanting some message which they could call truth. And he, having no such authority, could only offer in all simplicity that each must seek not for a mere crutch to lean on, but to stand erect on his own feet, believing in his own toughness and endurance, realizing that man's hope is in man's freedom, not given as a gift, but as a right and a responsibility to be earned. And the teachers of the young, they gather here from far places to meet the novelist and share ideas with him. And it is not long before Mr. Faulkner can say, the Japanese did not want another intellectual. What they wanted was just a human being who spoke not their same intellectual language, but who could write books which met their standards of what writing must be, yet who, in trying to communicate human being to human being, spoke in a mutual language much older than any intellectual tongue, because it is the simple language of humanity. What phases of Japan do you seek to explore? Humanity. Faces. The faces Van Gogh and Manet would have loved them. The pilgrim with staff and pack, and dusty with walking, squatting in the gate of the compound, his gown tucked about his thighs, before beginning, or perhaps already having set it in motion, the day. And here is one much too busy to have time to bother about whether he is happy or not, pastless and apparently immune, 
even from parents. The geisha's mass of blue-black lacquered hair encloses the painted face like a helmet, too heavy for that slender throat to bear. kimono, a covering from throat to ankles, a modesty proclaiming her femininity, where nudity would merely parade her mammalian femaleness, a modesty which flaunts its own immodestness. painted, fixed, expressionless face, immobile and immune. Yet behind it, something quick and alive and elfin, or more than elfin, puckish, or more than puckish even, sardonic and quizzical, a gift for comedy and more, for burlesque and caricature, for a sly and vicious revenge on the race of men. And he adds something more on women. She does not speak my language, nor I hers. Yet in two days, she knows my countryman's habit of waking soon after the first light. She knows I like a fresh room to breakfast in when I return from walking. And it is so. The room done for the day, coffee tray and morning paper. She asks without words, why I have no clothes to be laundered, and without words asks permission to sew the buttons and darn the socks. When speaking of me to others, she calls me wise man and teacher, I who am neither. She is proud to have me for her client, and I hope, pleased, that I try to deserve that pride and match with courtesy that loyalty. There is a lot of loose loyalty in this land, even a little of it is too valuable to be ignored. And beyond the faces and gestures, the lectures and questions, there is time to see something of the country by a man who knows a good deal of what we call country. This section of Japan is the one I know best. Your mountains are magnificent a fine backdrop for the good, rich, fertile land where your rice grows. It's nice country. It's beautiful. This is the same rice paddy I know back home where it replaces now and then the cotton. This one merely a little smaller and a little more fiercely cultivated. The work here done by hand, where in my country machines do it, since we have more machines than we have people. Nature is the same, only the economy is different. The names are the same names, too. Jonathan and Winesap and Delicious. The heavy August foliage is blue-gray with the same spray which we use. But there, the resemblance ceases. Every single apple, enclosed in its twist of paper, until that whole tree to this western eye becomes significant and festive and ceremonial, like the symbolic tree of the western rite of Christmas. Only it is more significant here, where in the west there is only one small, often artificial tree to a family. Here, not one tree to a family, but every tree of all is dressed and decked to proclaim and salute older gods than Christ.
an art in the simple building of man's habitation, which our Western ancestors seem to have lost somewhere when they moved. And always the water, the splash and drip of it, as if here were a people making constant oblation to water, as some people do to what they call luck. The tools they use evoke the ones Noah must have built his ark with. Yet the framework of the house seems to rise and stand without nails, as if here were magic. a grace and finesse carried over into an art and sport called archery. into the delicacy of a watercolor. Something fragile contained in the bowl of mountains but supple and sturdy and enduring. A place of beauty, worked wisely by such kind people that with three words the guest can go anywhere and live. Gohan, sake, arigato. And one more when all this is gone, which memory will always know, though I no longer remembers. Sayonara.